Good morning to your brothers and sisters. To say Happy New Year to you all. Those who are here with us now and um, those who are viewing us on the internet really want to wish for you God's richest blessings for 2021. And we pray that God will truly give you the desires of your hearts once it's according to his will. Amen? Amen. Um, I was just I was just thinking about you know today being the first Sunday in the year um, how how people are really viewing you know themselves in respect to what has transpired before and you know what they are expecting to to come at this time but as I say they always tell you that little is much when God is in it so I think we should truly start this year with a positive note. You know, remember it that if God is for us, then who can be against us? Um, if you want a title for the, today's message, it's, it's a little bit long. Seeing the heart of God as he gathers diverse people. One of the things I remember my grandmother used to tell me when I was very small was that once she looks at the company that you keep, she could truly know the sort of person that you are. So they'll surely say, um, um, show me your company and I'll tell you who you are. Amen? Right. What we want to do here is to really see, because we have been hearing from a long time, you know, you must have a relationship with God, turn over your life to God. And based on the messages that we have been getting about who God is, I don't think a lot of people end up liking God at all. Because they portray God as this God who is just filled with hatred for us. That as we slip, he's there to chastise us. And it's like he's out to send as many people as possible to hell. You know, I have a brother and a good friend of mine, you know, in, in the service of the Lord. He says that one day after he finished preaching a message in the country, you know, a deacon in the church came to him and said, um, how is it that all the while you're always talking about the love of God? What about God's wrath? But brothers and sisters, even God's wrath is from his love. God doesn't do anything at all except out of love because God is love. So we want to really look at the heart of God today. To let us really understand that God is for us. And he has promised to be with us throughout our entire physical journey here on earth. So as I said earlier on, it is really easy for persons to view you and I based on what they see coming out of us, right? Um, it is the same thing with God. Just as how we say, show us your company and we'll tell you who you are. We can say the th same thing for God because God is triune. His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look at that company that he keeps. Because if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, you can truly understand who the Father is. Because remember, one day the disciples came to him and they said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus was able to say, you know, I'm kind of disappointed with you. Look how long I've been with you. And you're going to ask me to show you the Father. Because that will be sufficient for them. So what Jesus Christ here is telling us is that once we look at him, Look at what he does. Look at the things he says. Then you will truly get a good impression of who the Father is. And the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When you look at the Holy Spirit and the work that he does, some of the things it shows you is that when you are so overwhelmed with problems, you know, and different situations that confront you, and you cannot even find the time to really pray to God. 
The scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will make intercession for you on your behalf. He tells you that all the things that Jesus Christ has, you know, um, asked us to, to, to inculcate in our, in our, in our everyday um, mindset, the Holy Spirit tells you that he will bring all those things back to you, to your remembrance. He has promised that once he comes and resides in your lives, he is going to be there forever. That is the, 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 the company that God keeps. So when we look at God, when we look at his operation, then we understand what he really stands for. So if we go back into the Garden of Eden, we truly get a nice little glimpse of who God is, whether he's a God of wrath or he's truly what he says he is, that he's a God of love. Because when we look at Adam, the first or first parent, Adam and Eve, God placed them in the garden and he had a wonderful relationship with them. He would meet with Adam every day. He would talk to him. And one day he came apparently to whatever meeting place that he would meet him and he didn't see him. So he said, Adam, where are you? You know, remember that we have or a little conversation to go. And um, Adam's explanation was that he was hiding. Why are you hiding? God was able to tell him that, yes, you did something that you weren't supposed to do. Did God take that big stick and beat him into oblivion? Based on the conversation, that took place, you realize that God was sympathetic to his shortcomings. Because Adam now realized that he was naked. So he didn't want God to see him in his nakedness. And what did God do? God killed a lamb and took the skin of the lamb and made clothes and covered up Adam. Is that a God of wrath? You lay down, you lay down a rule and you say you should not do this because the day that you do this, you are going to die. And the person go and do that. What would be your impression? What would be your action based on what it does? And it tells us that God still embraced him. Although God placed some um, problematic, problematic situations in his life, you know, onwards. But we still realize that God has never, ever left us. Never. If you continue a little further, I think in, in Genesis chapter 5, we, we end up seeing um, a, a, a story of Cain and Abel, two brothers. And jealousy came between them. And Cain, I think it's Genesis, Genesis 5 from about verse um, 8, I think. Let, let, me, let me just double check that quickly. But it, 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 it really explains to us, brothers and sisters. No, it's, it's chapter 4. Sorry. Yes. Um... From a verse, from verse 9, yes. It says, Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And Cain's response was, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And God says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. 
a fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth so you realize that once you do something wrong you have to pay a penalty so this was a penalty that Cain had to pay but let us see God's heart right here now and Cain said to the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground I shall be hidden from your face I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me did God said well yeah that's that, that what is supposed to happen to you because you didn't think about killing your brother you had no mercy on your brother so you know if you go out there and somebody kill you well that's justice did God say that no and the Lord said to him therefore whoever kills Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold not just twofold or threefold sevenfold and the Lord set a mark on Cain lest anyone finding him should kill him this is the God who we serve brothers and sisters this is what the Lord is all about God is not about to obliterate us from the face of the earth God is here to save us and he has done so in respect to he sending his son here on earth to pay the penalty for our sins God is in the saving business God is not in the business of killing off all that he has created no God is not consumed with wrath as some people would think we're going to see a little later that God takes pleasure in making sure that his creation have everlasting life in John chapter 3 verse 17 this is a, a scripture that we all know very well it says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved God is truly in the saving business brothers and sisters as pastor Graham said early on a lot of people do not know that they are loved very very sick a lot of persons do not know because they have never heard those words uttered to them that yes I love you their parents have never ever told them that so really sharing with people that God truly loves them no matter their past life no matter what they're doing now God still loves them God do not necessarily like the things that you do from time to time but the fact remains that God created you in his image and his likeness so he loves you he loves you in 2nd Peter 3 and verse 9 the scripture tells us the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but God says that he is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance this is the God who we served brothers and sisters he's the God who we serve let us turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and we are going to read a couple of verses Paul understood who God was and that is why he he he, he got pleasure out of forgetting the things that he was accustomed to and he really clung to the things that Jesus Christ laid out for him Paul understood the heart of God and that is why he was able to proclaim the good news without fear 
He was beaten for it. He was imprisoned for it. He slept in diverse places, you know, experiencing hunger because he saw the joy that was set before him. In Ephesians chapter 1, let us just start from verse 1 to get a flow. This letter I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And Paul says, I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. And this now is for all of us. He says, verse 3, All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us, along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to feel full, full, fulfill his own good plan. Sorry, And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now, you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news, that God saves you. And when you believe in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit who will be promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the Heritance he promised, and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. And you get in a better sense of who God is, brothers and sisters. Very, very clear that God is not out to get us, to wipe us off the face of the earth. God created us, brothers and sisters, for us to have an everlasting relationship with him. You know, we may sound like we are an echo chamber. But it's good because that is what we need to hear. That God loves us, brothers and sisters. God says it is his good pleasure to give us his kingdom. It is his good pleasure. It says every once in a while God grants his people a glimpse of of their place in the grand scheme of history. And throughout the Bible, we get glimpses of those things that we are special, brothers and sisters, no matter what we have done before, because God's son's sacrifice is so powerful that whatever lifestyle we have lived before, that sacrifice that he made is enough to cleanse us from our sins. It's enough to give us a renewed mindset. And the scripture reminds us, brothers and sisters, that as we offer up ourselves as living sacrifices to God, God is going to transform our minds, renew our minds, 
so that we can truly understand what the will of God is. And the will of God for us is that we will conquer death through his son Jesus Christ and that we will be able to have an everlasting life. You know, as I tell people all the while, we weren't created to die. And that is one of the reasons why we spend so much money. We do so many things, different things, to stay healthy and alive. Because we truly love life. Because God has placed that in our DNA. We want to live. We want to live a healthy life. And God has made this possible through his son Jesus Christ. God is not like us, brothers and sisters. We are really selfish human beings. And we somehow we like to think that we are more special than other persons. And sad to say, even in Christianity, we do not like diversity. It is either my denomination or no other denomination. And we are convinced that we are the only true church. We are convinced that we are the only true Christians. Some people, you know, if, if as I say, if you invite them to fellowship with, you know, another section of, 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 of God's family, they'll tell you, no, God is not over that side. <laughs> God is right here. They'll not go. No, they'll not go. So most of us, we do not like diversity. Because everything is all about me, myself, and I. But God loves diversity, brothers and sisters. If you look on his creation, if you look at nature, you realize how many things you know, um, are so different, but yet they come together to make one beautiful good. God likes diversity. And that is one of the reasons why God allows so many different denominations. Because God understands who we are. He's the one who created us. That we will not all like the same thing. Some of us are very quiet persons, introverts. If we're going to worship God, we want to do it in a very quiet and orderly setting. Some persons love to jump and to fling their foot and to shout. <laughs> and God allows that diversity because he understands who we are. One of the things we should understand in our brothers and sisters is that based on who God is, we cannot go up to God's level. He has to come down to where we are. So he comes down and he meets us wherever we are. God's intention and God's plan from before the world was created was that every single human being will be included in this plan of salvation. And the sooner we understand that, is the better our relationships will be with each person. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, I want us to remember, please remember, that not because persons do not go to your denomination not because persons do not like what you like doesn't mean that God hates them any better when Jesus Christ was here on earth the Pharisees who were representatives of God and his kingdom they were being hypocrit hypocritical They showed favoritism. And Jesus Christ went to some people who you, you would, you know, um, look down on because, you know, maybe they were in a poorer section of the neighborhood. You know, they didn't have a job. You know, they smoke weed and <laughs> do all kind of stuff. And, you know, they, it's like Jesus, um, the, the Pharisees were saying, but oh, I'm claims it. You know, he's the son of God, and he's gone down that place. He's not wrong. Who are those people? And Jesus Christ was able to explain to them that I have not come for the righteous, because you don't think you need me. 
I have come for sinners unto repentance. They understand that they are lacking in something and they want it. So I have come there. So brothers and sisters, our job is to make sure that persons understand that the God of the Bible is a God who loves them. He's a God who cares for them. He's a God who wants to see good things happening to them even now on this side of life. Let us go back into Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 3, we emphasize here, it says, All praise to God the Father for Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. God has proclaimed a blessing on our lives. And what's the blessing? It says, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So it may not be physical blessings. But we understand that God is with us, that God is for us, because he has truly blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And he has united us with Jesus Christ. Once we weren't a people, once we weren't children of God, but no, because we have been united with Jesus Christ, we are no children of God. And that makes us special. Once God cleanses of, of our sins, he does not take it back and throw it in our faces. As some of our fellow human beings love to do. Because one of the things you have to be very careful in accepting gifts <laughs> or favors from some persons. Because some persons, yes, they'll help you when you're in a difficult time. But what really happens is that when something is not going their way, they may come and ask you back for a favor. And you may not be in a position to do it. And they will just throw back everything that they did to you. And they'll maybe even go to tell people that you see that Courtney who claimed that him is a pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I helped him out, you know. And the one little time I look in for some, some blessing here from him now, he tell me, boy, I can't do it. And they start to name it out, you know. You know, you remember, boy, one day he never have no, no, nothing to send him children to school. I was there and they throw everything back into your face. God is not like that. God forgives us and he forgets it. Because he says we are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. So once we have been united with Christ... We understand, brothers and sisters, that we are truly special in his sight. In verse 4, this is us, this is showing us the heart of God, really and truly. He says, even before he made the world, God loved us. Before he created even one of us, he tells us that, you know, once a thought came into his mind, he says he loved us. And so he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So, brothers and sisters, God does not really judge us based on the mistakes that we may make from time to time. God judges us based on who we cling to. So you cling to Jesus Christ... The righteousness of Jesus Christ is going to be imputed to you. You're not going to depend on your righteousness because the scripture tells us that that righteousness is like filthy rags. And God knows, God knows that we cannot attain that mark of perfection. So God is not judging us based on our perfection. God is judging us on who we align ourselves with. So once you realize that Jesus Christ is with you and for you, then you are going to hold on to him because you understand that once you hold on to him, then all that is his will be yours also. In verse 5, it says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is the good news that Jesus Christ has asked us to proclaim 
to the world. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. There's nothing good that God is withholding from us, brothers and sisters. Nothing at all. And God blesses us from time to time. Look at the Apostle Peter. Peter was with Jesus Christ throughout his whole earthly ministry, which was about three and a half years. And Peter said some things showing us where his heart was really be, who was, was. Because, you know, Jesus Christ was talking about, you know, that he would have to give up his life and all kind of things. And Peter was saying, you're crazy. I have a friend like me. Nothing can harm you. Nobody can do anything because I will defend you. And Peter did not just talk it. He acted it out. Because the first time they tried to, to, to arrest Jesus Christ, although they arrested him too. But when they came, once they touched him, Peter didn't even see the rest of the soldiers with their sword. He was just seeing his friend. You're trying to harm a friend. What? And we can safely say that he did not go for the ear of the soul. He went for his neck. <laughs> yes. And further down, Jesus Christ says, you know that you're going to deny me when things get rough. And Peter said, you're crazy, Lord. You're crazy, man. I will go to hell and back with you. And Jesus said, you know, I, I'm going to Put something right before you that you'll remember that I told you. So one day you're going to hear the cock crow. <laughs> right as you deny me and you all didn't believe. And when Peter's life was threatened, that's the same thing that he did. He denied Jesus Christ. And, you know, we get a sense that, you know, he was really vexed when, you know, they were pointing him out that, yes, we know that you were with Jesus Christ. And he was saying, I don't know this man. I never see him yet. <laughs> never. And when Jesus Christ was resurrected and he appeared back to them, did Jesus Christ condemned Peter to hell? Because he denied it. No, Jesus Christ said, I gave you a work. I said, you are going to lead this church. Don't worry about the mistakes that you made. Because I understand that it was an in the moment kind of thing. So brother and sister, it's not because we may fall down, you know, from time to time. Means that we are any less loved by God. No. As it says earlier on, God's intention and plan is to include everyone. And that should be our intention and plan too. We should be aware of any hidden biases and learn how to lessen them. And we do have biases. You know, we don't like people who come from Rome, so we don't like people who can't speak proper English. We don't like people who dress a certain way. We have all kinds of biases. But when it comes to this life that God is holding us, holding out to us through his son Jesus Christ, those biases should be gone. We should see persons for who they are. That Jesus Christ so loved the world that he sent his one and only son as a sacrifice for us. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life in verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 1 Paul says he's so rich in kindness and grace that is God he's talking about that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins he has showered his kindness on us, along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ. God's will was a mystery before, but he tells us now that God has revealed that to us. 
We know more and more about Jesus Christ now. We know more and more about how God the Father operates. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And what is that plan? Verse 10. And this is a plan that at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything that is in heaven and everything that is on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance. You see how many times he's repeating it? And he makes everything work out according to his plan. So we weren't a plan B. We were always in that original plan and only plan that God has for humanity, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. God is love. And so is the love for every single one of us, no matter where we come from, no matter what race we are, no matter what cultural background we are, God's love is the same for us. You know, it matters not to which denomination we come from. Once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He is with us and He's for us. He says, sadly, sadly, really sadly, many believers feel they have a special link to the blessings of God that others do not have. Perhaps they believe that they, their, their day of worship is better than others, and thus they judge people. Somehow they think that their method of worship is better than others, and thus they judge others also. Some think that their theology is better than others, and they continue to judge their race, their gender. But in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, all are forgiven of their sins in Jesus Christ. All, not just some. Not some. We are God's agents on earth, and we are tasked with participating in the plan of gathering all things in Christ Jesus. As it says in verse 10, things in heaven and things on earth. This means, brothers and sisters, that we need to create an intention to overcome, as I said earlier, any biases that we may, might hold, that we might harbor. And we may truly see Jesus, um, the, 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 the children out there. We may see them as God see them. Scripture tells us that when Jesus Christ looked around and he saw the people just wandering around like sheep without a shepherd, he saw the hopelessness on them. The scripture says he had compassion on them, brothers and sisters. We need to ask God to give us that same heart for his creation. We need to pray to God to give us love for our fellow enemies. Not, not fellow, for our enemies. People who despise us, persecute us. We need to have a heart that we will truly say, God, they do not understand because they are truly of their father, the devil. So we ask that you transform them by the renewing of their minds. They may understand that they are wonderfully made and that Jesus Christ died for their lives. So brothers and sisters, we will do this by continually listening to the Holy Spirit for ways that we can communicate God's love and inclusion to all persons. So as we move forward into this year, let us truly pray and ask God for a new mindset that we will truly love all men, irrespective of where they are from, irrespective of the, 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 um, the ethnic background or whatever it may be. Let us not be filled with hatred because people are just filled with evil, because we inherited that nature when we were born. God wants to 
remove that nature from us and to replace it with his divine nature. That is the God that is revealed in the Bible. That is a God who tells you that he takes no pleasure even in the death of a wicked person. And we cannot overemphasize it that, brothers and sisters, God is love. And God wants to see all of us come into a realization that he is really for us, brothers and sisters. So let us really go out there with that boldness that whenever God sets up a little situation, we will truly be able to tell them that, hey, God loves you. God wants to be with you. God is for you. Let us pray. Holy, righteous, loving Father, we come before you this day thanking you that you have saved our lives for us to see a new dispensation, a new year. 2021 we thank you father almighty that you have still held us up that we are still a part of your work we are still a part father almighty of this gospel this good news that needs to reach every single human being and we pray now for boldness we pray that you open doors father almighty for us where we can go through we pray that the Holy Spirit will just continually just fill our minds, our mouths, Father Almighty, with the right things to say that will truly be a blessing to the hearts of those who are suffering, maybe emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever way. But help us that we can truly be that balm in Gilead, Father Almighty, representing your kingdom, that we will bring hope where there is hopelessness. We will bring light where there is darkness. And we will bring life where there is death. We thank you so very much, Father Almighty, that you looked at us, not from the evil things that we have always been doing, but you looked beyond our faults and you saw our need. You saw our need for a washing and a cleansing. And you did that by sending your son, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful God you are. And we truly want the opportunity to be able to tell, tell people who you are, that you are truly a God of love. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. Words cannot express how much we appreciate what you have done for us. Just help us, Father Almighty that as we live our daily lives, that we truly will do things that will be pleasing to you. And in so doing, it, those same things will truly be a blessing to our fellow men. We pray that you truly give us a heart that will truly want to reach out to those who are suffering, you know, those who are hungry, those who are in need of shelter, whatever it is. Help us to, us to bring comfort to them in whatever form that you will bless us and that they will truly know that there is a God who really cares for them. So we truly proclaim a blessing upon your creation at this time because we know, Father Almighty, that is your will. So we just bless you, we praise you, we magnify you and we just say thanks once again in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our High Priest, our soon-coming King, our Elder Brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.